Center as our resource person for today's one day free webinar on the art of effective communication skills organized by Bharat Digital Academy. Professor Nihal is currently a professor in the Department of English at Aligarh Muslim University. With an impressive academic and administrative career spanning over 26 years, he has made significant contribution to the English language teaching, ELT, and professional communications skills. Professor Nihal has held notable positions such as Director at AMU Kisan Ganj Center Bihar and Assistant Director at the Center for Distance Education AMU. His academic credentials include an MPhil and PhD in ELT from Aligarh Muslim University and a postgraduate diploma in the teaching of English from the English and Foreign Languages University, IFLO, Hyderabad. Professor Nihal has an extensive publication record with 32 research papers and 45 conference presentation so far. He has coordinated over 60 national and international workshops and spread-headed initiatives like the Kindle Mobile Learning Initiative. He has authored influential works and his recent research focuses on technology, mediated language, teaching and pragmatic awareness. We look forward to an enriching session filled with Professor Nihal's insightful perspectives and vast experience. Welcome everyone to this webinar. Thank you. Can you, can you hear me all of you? Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes. Sir. Sir, you are not audible, sir. I'm not audible. Yes, yes, sir, yes. Audible. Audible? Achha. Yes, sir, yes. Okay. So, uh, this session uh, on... Uh, I want to know the participants, uh, where are they from, uh, to which institutions they belong to. So, how many participants we have right now? We have some 27, right? Uh, can you uh, can anyone tell me uh, where they come from from different institutions right I can see some of the familiar faces but uh, some of the participants I cannot uh, know where they are coming from so that yes sir I am from West Bengal North Bengal University Achha, okay West Bengal please, North, please, okay. please write in the chat box and we are from yeah. Yes, yes. Right, chat in chat box, no? It is yes. very easy for. <clears throat> yes. Okay. West Bengal, any other place? Right in the chat box, the background of the your dear participant, yes. kindly. Yes, name and place where you belong to institution, right? So that it helps me. Yes, sir. Okay. I so, I welcome all the participants who have joined for this webinar. Uh, I hope I'm audible to you, all of you. In the meantime, I would like to see that you write your name and affiliation, affiliation at least where you belong to, uh, which institution you are working at, right? So that it helps me to restructure my uh, session with you communication with you. I can see from people from coming from Jamia Milia, Delhi, and then uh, from, uh, from someone from West Bengal, Sandeep University, Madhubani, and uh, uh, yes, so different people from different places, right? How many from West Bengal, please? Can you tell me how many from Bihar and how many from Aligarh and how many from Delhi? From Hyderabad Central University, okay, fine, okay, fine. And so I start my discussions, right, with you and maybe my interactions with you on communication skills. 
the topic that is art of communication skills. I would rather not say that it is a, going to be an art of uh, communication skills because art requires a little bit of perfection also. I would just say that it is a science of communication skills, right? And we want to work it on uh, how communication happens in actually in actual cases, in real uh, situations. I would uh, read one account of uh, Renu Khatur, who has migrated to US. Uh, her achievements appeared in Span magazine. Are you able to listen to me, all of you? Yes. Yes. Are you able to listen to me? Hello. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, there is there was an account given uh, uh, given about Renu Khatur. When she was eighteen, she received less than two weeks' notice that she would be soon married to a stranger, disrupt her education, and would move to United States. So, look at the position here, and without being able to speak a single sentence of English, this was. Uh, this was the start. This is the starting paragraph of the, her essay. <clears throat> I say on her, and <clears throat> this appeared in Span magazine some sometime in 2022. The value of an American uh, education, and it was the blurb said like that: Renu Khatur launched an inspiring career after studying in United States. You can too. Now, <clears throat> and she has. She is presently. Uh, she has served as a chancellor of University of Houston system and president of its flagship University of Houston campus since January 2008. Now look at this position. That what she is now and what she was then when <clears throat> opening view, few lines were mentioned about here. That, again I'll repeat, that when she was 18, she received less than two weeks notice that she would soon be married to a stranger. Okay. And her, this, uh, that would disrupt her education in India and would move to the United States. That time, she was not able to speak a single sentence of English. And later on, she has achieved all that I just mentioned, that she became the, uh, the Chancellor of University of Houston. Now, this journey uh, was definitely a journey of communication, I would say. And uh, <clears throat> she is seen in a photograph, this magazine that I've got, that she's addressing a class at the University of Houston. She advises first generation international students to be passionate about their dreams and follow them with guts and determination. The person who was unable to speak a single sentence in the initial state has moved, has taken a long journey and she has reached a height that is worth admiring for anyone, worth inspiring. So this is one of the things that I wanted to tell you, what is communication? And then she has struggled, right, uh, that a lot and her hard work had paid off. She gained proficiency not only in her subject, but also in communication skills. And then she advise, advises Indian students that how America becomes a land of opportunity. That is, a, that is a issue apart, right? And what you have, you must always express. So what you think about your life career, you must always follow it and you must express it. But this vision I'm talking about, this vision is very important journey of Renu from the point of view of communication. Her struggles, her qualifications, how she has upgraded, that is a matter, of course, that is not a very uh, different thing because she has made a different kind of mark. Now, similar kind of things happen when you move from one strata of society to another strata of society. Sometimes background helps Sometimes there's no background to it. Then 
then I, this is one instant. Renu is one incident, right? Another important incident that I would like to say that I'll quote them also. That our, I'll come back to a little explanation later. That you see, uh, I was mentioning in one of the conferences that Jagdish Bhagwati was a very great economist. And uh, if you look at Bhagwati's contribution, right, it is exemplary, I would say, as an economist. Because Bhagwati had uh, been, uh, he was a brilliant mind. So prior to joining the Delhi School of Economics, Jagdish Bhagwati had already published his paper <clears throat> and immunizing growth, a geometric note in review of economic studies. So when, and then he was a student of Harry Johnson's, right, at the International Trade School at Cambridge University. He, as an economist, are you able to listen to me? Hello, right. He demonstrated that despite following uh, optional trade policy, a distortion would induce a welfare loss in growing economy greater than the gains from the trade. So domestic policies has an effect. Now, this piece of uh, academic brilliance uh, was a kind of a, uh, what do you say, a new insight. And he published some of his influential articles including the classic domestic distortions, tariffs, and the theory of optimum subsidy. Jointly authored by V.K. Ramaswamy, challenging, and he challenges the pre-existing notion uh, that free trade had no place in the presence of distortions in developing economy. And free trade can be optimal when the distortions are dealt with domestic policy. So free trade, domestic policies, policies, distortions were his subject. And you know what happened? That left a very deep impression on the way he communicated things in dealing with the issues of international trade. So this is about Jagdish Bhagwati, is that how he dealt about the communication issues related to domestic policy, free trade. And uh, this also gave an impression that he is being quoted as a great teacher. He, right, great teacher in dealing with the issues of interaction. That means a great communicator. Now, this is Jagdish Bhagwati's case. The first case I started with, uh, Renu's case, right? And then I'll come to Another point, right? Now, look at these two cases. They are different cases because one is taking a journey from not being able to speak a single sentence of English, then becoming a president of Houston University, chancellor. Another person, a gnomist by training, Jagdish Bhagwati, he brings in a different kind of insight. I hope you are able to get me, all of you, yes? Are you able to listen to me? Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yes, so, sir. Yes, so this exactly had a kind of an impact on his, uh, you know, on his uh, academic scholarship, how he, he started looking at the academic uh, world of uh, economics and how communication became a crucial issue in the dealing with the issues of international trade in case of Jagdish Bhagwati. Now, 
both the struggles are of obviously they are of different nature and different kind and in different contexts but common to these concerns are that they are constantly talking about uh, what kind of communication prevails out of the interaction of these three elements. When a student moves from India to US, the struggle, the communication issues are important. A person has to apply for a scholarship. He has to go for a job somewhere in uh, taking admission to a course. He has to, before that, he has to struggle for his visa. He has to secure admissions. And then he gets a break. He is, he takes a kind of a journey different from the one that he had. And he struggles for communication at every end. Look at this point for visa, for applying for a course, taking the right choices of the course, counseling for the courses, admission policies. Then he looks at the university websites, how university websites are uh, valid, legitimate, how universities have got a kind of legitimacy, their ranking, accreditation. So many issues are there where this person is applying. And he struggles at every point of communication students. Now, this is one thing that communication comes. So the angle to which we communication we take all the time from classroom based situations like uh, communication is something that can be uh, seen from the point of view of listening or from the point of view of writing. Of course, they are. Important. But there are issues that are continuously giving you opportunities to realize the communication angle. And they are. And these two cases point, right? There are so many other cases also. And you, many of the cases you know very well because you have been, some of you might be teachers, some of you might be professors, some of you might be working in academic institutions. So you know how this idea of communication happens. And what exactly, what are the opportunities for communication? So you, we need to realize that what are the greater uh, aspects or greater perspectives of communication that we often think that this is not the my area. But we don't realize that when you are moving on to moving from mobility, I'm saying mobility, moving from one place to another place, moving from one course to another place, moving from one country to another country, and moving from one geography to another geography, it involves a whole lot of communication skills. And different type of communication skills with different uh, people around, different interacting points, and different complexity of interaction is there. Multiplicity of interactions are there, and complexity is also there. So this is a communication skill. Communication skills is not simply what we are talking from the normative point of view. This is just a classroom kind of thing, classroom communication skills. That communication means these things. Communication is a greater, it takes place at, it is at the deep end. And, and, the, and there are deep end strategies where people are leaving a country and then what kind of communication is going to happen. How the person is surviving through those communications. Right? This is what the whole discussion is all about. Now, when you have something of this nature, you see, you will have to see how communication happens. One thing more, in Indian context also, that is some of the examples, we'll also discuss that. But before that, we need to understand that uh, our education systems, you know, they face a very challenging task of delivering effective communication that are very especially challenging to the learners with resource and capacity constraints. Now here I'm talking about the unlearners ko padhana classroom mein, I'm bit in Hindi also, I'll tell you why. 
और इन उर्दू उन लड़कों को पढ़ाना जिनके पास रिसोर्सेस कम होते हैं जो कम दे कम फ्रॉम ए डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड डाइवर्स बैकग्राउंड और उनको कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स की ट्रेनिंग देना विथ रिसोर्स एंड कैपेसिटी कंस्ट्रेंट्स वो एक बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है और कभी कभी एक और चैलेंज हो जाता है जब बोल दिए यस सो प्लीज अनम्यूट बिकॉज देर विल बी अ डिस्टर्बेंस काइंडली अनम्यूट तो दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अप्रोचिंग द कम्युनिकेशन एंगल विथ रिसोर्स एंड कैपेसिटी इन कंस्ट्रेंट्स एंड we see that how communication is not simply a matter of classroom acquisition of communication communication is outside the classroom also that we any kind of communication that is happening whether it's in classroom or outside the classroom we broadly term it as communicative practice how communication is happening and it happens in so many different ways it doesn't happen only in english it might happen in your mother tongue uh, in your multilingual situation and then from there you are moving into the classroom so this part is important from the point of view of diversity one thing then this actually we think that this will be useful in transforming the learning outcomes communication outcomes and particularly the challenge factor is also available is also there because students diverse needs in low resource context you will have to also see that students diverse needs in low resource context and or in low income or students who are coming from a low income settlement how do we take care of their communication how how can a class cannot cater how can a class cannot cater people students coming from different angle this is a pedagogic issue but before that i am saying consider let us consider the way things are changing in our society the way things are diverse in our society people are coming from different background different medium instruction different board of education different ethnicity different culture different race and if different locations that is uh, from somebody is coming from a remote area and somebody is coming from a uh, please uh, somebody is coming from uh, urban area and somebody is coming from a good schooling background somebody is coming from a vernacular schooling background all these things adds up to the issue of diversity so we must understand that why diversity is important and how it is shaping up the communicative practices this is important and unless we understand this part we will never be able to understand that uh that how communicative practices are crucially important and they are highly dependent on this nature of diversity i am not talking about diversity in terms of second language acquisition factors like age motivation you know proficiency aptitude cognitive orientation no i am not talking about that i am talking about the other factor environmental factors that is more a concern of diversity like learner coming from a hindi background coming from a non uh, uh, hindi background coming from a regional language background coming from uh, 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 a language where he has not uh, uh, mastered either of the languages the target language and his home language so different categories of learners come in the classroom and where they come from i am talking about that point that is the diversity issue and location their location is different their location is different 
their institutions are different their discourses are different they come from different domains and they have different ways of experiencing the social media also that is also one of the find and they have a different nature of communication network also <laughs> so <laughs> this actually constitute diversity the environmental diversity and this is going to shape our communication the way we think the way we communicate this is important why because most of the time we what happens that we are talking about uh english not english alone we are talking about english with other languages and we are talking about a factor that language use is takes a very different kind of a turn it takes a mobility turn that means people are mobile people are using different languages different dialects at different points of time and when you are using a social media like whatsapp half on your whatsapp half on your english and half in your mother tongue this is the nature of communication bits and pieces and this is what it the scholars call it particularly uh uh bloomer call it call it this phenomena as we communicate in bits and pieces truncated multilingualism we communicate in bits and pieces we cannot we do not com communicate always in one language so there is no stand alone language where you communicate only in english only in hindi only in urdu only in telugu only in kannada no if a, if a person is coming from a tamil nadu he knows a little bit of hindi also he knows a little bit of urdu also and he knows english also and he knows his home language also no and he is a mobile user and he is a mobility he is a mobile person also he is moving from one place to another place so imagine his interaction with so many other people and in so many other domains so what could be the nature of communication this is about communication communicative practice that refers to not only at one place it refers to the diaspora level of communication the migration level of communication the internal migration level of communication from persons moving from punjab to tamil nadu or from kerala to kashmir what happens so mobility is there uh, location uh, change is there geography is there language they don't live in one language they live in languages they communicate in dialects and dialectical communication is also required at some places they complete they communicate in local language so this is how it has shaped our nature it has shaped the nature of our communicative practices we must understand so a person is a, a, a call Uh, centers are created where the companies who are going to uh, come and sell their products or they want to do trade with uh, uh, with the home and host institutions they are looking for expert professionals who can be well qualified also in local languages other than english that is communication and i told you that uh, there was one in situation where renu khatar was not able to communicate a single sentence of english and jagdish bhagwati points out the different communication points between domestic policies trade policies protectionist policies and then uh, he he is rated as one of the one of the most brilliant minds in economics so communication that happens in a particular subject communication that happens from person moving from one place to another place and the nature of diversity and the domains are important kahan kahan kis kis jagah par kaun sa communication hame karna hai ye bahut important 
what kind of connection should we be doing at what points of time and what would be the nature of our communication not simply english not simply hindi not simply urdu or any other language right odia person coming from odisha he will have to see that he is he has equipped himself with hindi he has equipped himself with english he has equipped himself with social media and he combines all these things into different nature he is writing not only on pen and paper he is writing on whatsapp also on instagram also he is he is using twitter also and somewhere he is typing things in twitter also somewhere he is looking at the document through his whatsapp also and if you combine all these sets of activities together this is how our modern communicative practices are in this session which we are talking about is more or less understanding communicative practices how it has grown out of diverse nature of variables that we come across in our day to day life so just english alone will not help us in a country in a diverse country like india and in diversity is not a matter of india also diversity every nation has got diversity in us also this is it is a diverse nation canada also we have a diverse nation right uh, uh, canada also we have a diverse nation and even new zealand and other countries uh, also they have got they have got a diversity which is uh, which which probably people are using uh, diversity and they are trying to understand that this diversity is because not because of your simply one one kind of background but so many different kind of background and so many different kind of orientation that you have got so one orientation of classroom orientation one orientation of your profile of your background of your schooling the other one is of your movement to another place the third point location then you are and then that is what we are calling it as multi modality that is you are using multi systems and multi literacy you are using sound you are using phone you are using images you are using whatsapp you are sending the document through whatsapp so that exactly has given a great difference and that has made a different great difference in the in the sense that you are trying to understand the context in toto and with this context keeping that context in mind right only you always communicate so communicate another example of communicative practice is that we not only talk about um, uh, yes you not not only talk about um, uh, diversity we are also talking about uh, context and we are also talking about different dimensions of context so so one is schooling the other one is you are not being schooled in any circumstances still you are communicating so this is one aspect that we need to understand that how researches and discussions around us always uh, give you an idea that communication is just listening speaking reading writing not simply they are just tools communication is something more than that the diverse nature of factors the environmental nature of factors and your host uh, situation or a host institution and the institution with whom you are networking if you if you are born in a place like uh, say in delhi and you want to come to you want to go to madras or chennai for another education so you are taking your background of delhi and you are reaching interacting with people at chennai so you are taking one interaction also with that of another factor right that this 
uh, diaspora, internal migration, your background, environment, environmental factors, they constitute in terms of your diversity. So identity also, there is an of course, of course, identity also, you, you carry a nation with you, you carry a state with you, you carry a region with you, and you carry a dialect with you and language. Are you able to get me? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. We are able to get you. Yes. So you are carrying yourself with so many different versions of different dimensions of diversity. Your place, your profile, your language, your parental background, and your community. And then classifications of different nature. They exactly shape your communicative practices. When these is, when these are the nature of communicative practices, just try to imagine what could be our community. And look at the another factor I'm giving you, that migration of skilled workers versus migration of unskilled workers. Communication changes. Similarly, people coming and studying in a privately aided institution and coming in a government aided institution and semi-funded institution, again, the communication changes. So we have to understand this factor, something as, something as very special that when coming people coming from host institution and they are networking with foreign institutions, right? Foreign institutions, they communicate from different point of view. They do not communicate from a single language. They live in languages and they, speak in different tones with different attitudes and with diff with different domains they are using language in different domains so this is one of the aspects that i wanted to emphasize then there is another point that we are tra trying to understand what are these communicative practices they are very different in nature because sometimes what happens people belong to one culture so there is a cultural factor that comes into operation when it is a point of communication, how the local culture. I, I'll give you an example. That when in letters, when we were writing letters in British period, in British period, right? We were trying to write respected sir, respected madam. You must have seen honorable sir, or so many things were there. Now we write only madam. This is a post-colonial era. So this change is there. Why? Then earlier we were saying, beg your pardon. And I pray, prayer for two days leave. You were writing, prayer for two days leave. So this, look at the language here. Because now our communicative practices have changed. We have, we have seen into a different, we are seen into a different ball of language and languages and one language we see we see the shape of a language in terms of dialect also in terms of idiolect also in terms of regional stratification of that language so if you do not know the local language you cannot buy good vegetables in a heart village heart heart market i hope you know the word heart where you purchase vegetables we in bihar they use the term heart and you get good vegetables there quality vegetables there, which you may be getting also in city with a price is very high there, but here you get good vegetables with at a very cheap rates because you can communicate well. Otherwise, the same man coming from the rural background, he will also have the same ability to dodge you, right, with selling rubbish vegetables, right? They also does the same thing. But this is how the communication happens. We evaluate issues from not only from uh, the, we always get all these notions from learning environment notions. Learning environment comes a little later. You see, learning environment is at home. Then we come, we take the notions of communication from a school environment. No, it's school environment comes a little later. It's, this is all, you know, formal places. But before that, communication is already happening. So there is a big dimension of communication happening in different situations. And if you look at this, you will find that uh, people participate to communicate. Not people participate, they interact to communicate. So this is one of the aspects that 
and then define the policies that you also require. Right, state also has a role to play to define your policies. Right, how you communicate. So if it is a school education. The norms are different. If it is there, there is a syllabus, there is a curriculum, there is examination, and so on. But look at the people who communicate in market. They don't belong to any school. Bakhtin was one of the scholar who was talking about that people learn language in market. They do not learn language in school, right? And I mean, he didn't say like that that they do not learn in school, right? But he said that market gives you a kind of a different field of language, the diversity of language. So this is one aspect. Another important thing is that the, sometimes we do need to understand that what is this level of diversity and what is this level of super diversity? Now, when we are talking about diversity, it is in different terms. Super, again, you go into the very dynamics of diversity, you will get super diversity. So all these things are important. And communicative practice means you are you are in different languages, you have a different domains to communicate, communicate with, and you have a different nature of communication. And English is one of them. So when we call upon this idea of art of communication, there is nothing like art of communication. You see, you can speak wrong English and you can communicate very well. And you can speak correct English also, but you may not be communicating well. But that does not mean that I am justifying the wrong English. Wrong English is a wrong justified from the normative terms. And But sometimes you can mix the languages also. You have a code switching and code mixing. So many things are there where you mix two different languages. So this exactly is not the idea of boring language, your idea of communication. And you see, when you have affiliations in mobility, when you have affiliations in mobility, when you have when you when you move from one place to another place, you need to understand that you are not only a person coming from Jharkhand or Jamshedpur. You are coming from a place where you have to communicate to a person that this is the vegetable I am looking for. This is the product I am looking for, right? And if an other person understands, your communication is done. So this is what. Similarly, at the airline counter, right, or flight counter, if you are not able to state the person who is going to give you tickets, right, probably the wrong tickets uh, convey a wrong kind of communication. So this is one aspect. And then uh, we also understand that uh, sometimes we talk about uh, territory, territorialization, you know, language operates by a territory, one territory. Territory of, say, if I'm in Aligarh, there is a territory of Aligarh and Aligarh, cities around Aligarh, territory. When, But if I'm in Lucknow, another territory. If I'm in Tamil Nadu, another territory. In Kerala, another territory. In, in Karnataka, another territory. So territory of language. So territory of language does not mean that territorization does not mean that you are localizing language. Of course, local languages are equally very important in understanding the nature of communication. Now I'll give you four or five strategies, you see, if we talk about, I'll finish uh, before we go for interaction, right? I'll finish. See, coming back to now English, this is where I was talking about diversity as one of the key points for uh, dimension for shaping community practice. Now let's come back to English. In English, although things have also changed a lot, you see, and communication from the point of view. You see, when, when you used to say, let me thank her for her wonderful job that she or he has done to me, right, in the interview board. Then you say, again, I'm citing the same example which I often cite, that you know, thank you notes have grown into a follow-up notes in interview. You are attending an interview and you thank the interviewers that you have communicated this point. And now this point is taken up as your follow-up notes. Follow-up notes means you are in 24 hours time, you communicate with the interviewers that this is what the point you are trying to make, right? And you are giving a post-interview correspondence with the interviewers. So this is one communication. 
अदरवाइज लुक एट द नेचर ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन आपका इंटरव्यू हुआ आपसे सवाल पूछा गया आपने सवाल का जवाब दे दिया फिर आप चले गए लेकिन वो कह रहे हैं कि नहीं ऐसा नहीं हो सकता है अब इसके बाद भी आप अपने इंटरव्यूअर से सवाल अपने पॉइंट्स को रख सकते हैं 24 घंटे के अंदर में समथिंग दैट यू हैव इन योर माइंड विच यू कुड नॉट से इट देयर बिकॉज ऑफ पॉजिटिव ऑफ टाइम और बिकॉज ऑफ द राइट एनी अदर इंटरवेंशन तो वॉट है you can talk about your conversation after the interview as, as well so this is the nature of dekhi yahan nature of communication ka hissa hai team right you see and then you demonstrate your self awareness your knowledge of your subject after the interview also this is also important sometimes students come to me and say sir koi exam aisa mil likh raha tha ye ek sawal mera chhut gaya ya aadha likh paya uske baad but the he or she knows the subject we can understand that point बट वी गो बाई ओनली बाई बुक्स जो हमने लिखा हम उसी पर मार्क्स देंगे लेकिन हम लोग और भी जो चीज जान रहे हैं कि इस पर्टिकुलर दैट सेम पर्टिकुलर पर्सन नोज हर सब्जेक्ट वेरी वेल एंड बिकॉज ऑफ पॉजिटिव ऑफ टाइम शी हेज नॉट बीन एबल टू राइट राइट सो दिस इज अचर ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन बट ऑफकोर्स नॉर्मेटिव कंटेक्स में ये सब उतना वी कैनॉट कंसिडर दैट हाँ वी कैनॉट कंसिडर दैट बट वी नीड टू हैंडल सच नेचर ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन दैट इज Uh, what happens after the interview what happens and then uh, did you the idea is that how do you interact when you meet with multiple people multiple interactions and how did you reach them all or not this is one thing that is the i'm talking about strategy the next strategy that sometimes when we are talking about communication we should be think that we cannot do things as i was talking about the renu's case the renu has was in at 18 she was asked to marry a person right who was stranger to her and she had to move to us and when she was not able to speak a single sentence and from there she became the chancellor of hoston university now look at this thing that journaling is one of the criteria that we often express our thoughts so this is one of the strategy right that is important that you can express your thought process through journaling right uh, journaling and this writing will help you clarify your thought this is also communication communication is not simply l s r w that i speak and you listen and you will speak and i will listen no communication is also self writing about your self awareness is and reflecting about your self awareness that is also the third important strategy right is that when you are when you are in a curiosity mode in class or anywhere or in a market or at a meeting you will ask so many questions and when you ask questions you explore new topics and that itself gives you a lot of opportunity to understand new concepts through courses right this is where this is one of the ways to develop communication communication does not simply mean that you study and do well in school and get good marks no communication means you have to read a outside situations and the different domains and then the third next important strategy is that you talk about if you are talking about current events and if you are reading about current events and recent developments you are engaging yourself with the recent development that also gives you an idea of communication. not simply studying english for communication not simply studying english grammar for communication this is the fourth strategy and the fifth one you experiment with different kinds of learning visual learning auditory learning uh, learning the communication of body language right so when you have a different kind of learning different method works which method works best for you either through writing either through listening either to watching a, a, a text uh visually so you have to identify which method works best for you the next one is that teaching people to understand that how you can gain your intelligence how you can improve your communication is always linked with intelligence emotionally very uh, sensitive people they are noted for their having a very deep insight to their communication and therefore that 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 part when you say uh, 
uh, when you start teaching people uh, any subject, if you start teaching people to anyone, you are automatically increasing your intelligence, and you ought, that automatically increases your emotion, right, of the subject. So this is also one of the one of the very good strategies for communication. And then the seventh one that I'm talking about is that talk about your failures and experiences and your achievements. That is also a communication. So when you start doing that, that increases your intelligence. And then before I end up for interaction, right? You, if you have this part that you can exposure, right? You exposure, right? And then uh, you interact with different people, different points of time. You have exposure. Then that exposure gives you a lot of interacting points for communication. So if you haven't met people, and if you're just silent, communication is not happening. If you're talking to different people at different points of time, that means you are improving your communication, no matter what language you are using. Communication does not simply is confined to one particular thing that, that is art. It's not an art, I think. It is an art when you receive a perfection in one point that you have the perfect language, then it becomes an art. Otherwise, it's the science, I would say. It's the psychology of communication that is important. So these are the important aspects that I wanted to deal with you before I can have questions from you, right? So uh, that how communicative practices are shaped by different nature of diversity and how the big big picture of communication is there, not the big picture of English communication. We are always worried about if I can speak better, if I can improve my writing. But where will you improve your writing? Unless you interact, unless you have an exposure to different things, unless you talk about your failures, achievements, unless you talk about that is that I was talking about, that what kind of method suits you best in learning. And then again, I'll give you a quick report whether you are able to, whether you are informed about current events and developments or not. If you are talking about elections, right? If you know how elections are happening in India, so you are improving your communication. But if you don't talk about elections, you are simply going to classroom for learning English grammar. That will not help you to improve your communication. That will help you to improve your grammar. So I'm demystifying certain concepts regarding communication as. Grammar will help you to write a correct sentence, but it may not help you to write, a, it may not help you to be a good communicator. If you are watching elections at on TV, or if you are yourself in the uh, uh, polling booth, seeing how people come and vote, and what do they talk about, about voting, I think that is more a very valid point for communication, right? Rather than we just uh, come and read things in class, and we do question and answer, and then you do the right answer for the right question. That is not communication. That is normative way of, that is that is the norms, the institutions they have, you are improving upon it. So thank you very much, and uh, I please do have questions. I'll be happy to answer you. Hello. Actually, I don't have PPT. I just gave it spontaneously. Uh, maybe I will, uh, somewhere, some message has come. Yeah. Good morning, sir. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, sure. What's your good name, please? Yeah, my name is Farha. Okay. 
so actually uh, i'm uh, i was asking you in the pedagogy uh, we teach english uh, where uh, uh, you should be knowing like you know uh, dr kn anandan he's a linguist and we follow his pedagogy which is uh, discourse oriented pedagogy discourse oriented pedagogy yes yes yeah so where the english uh, has been taught using discourses i mean uh, we interact with the students and we teach so could you please help me my question to you is like uh, do you think any other pedagogy like which will be helpful to make a student understand easily because uh, learning is uh, learning english is uh, totally a communication a child in a us states so he have never heard a piece of grammar but he speaks well in english uh, when he is 2 to 3 years so how does that happen and whereas in a, uh, in india we try we uh, the other people they keep going to spoken english classes they keep going to learn grammar but somehow they fail to communicate uh, effectively so what were, what might be the reason uh, for a uh, two years to speak uh, well in english and uh, for a uh, uh, you know grown up person uh, who's 27 my question to a, uh, how much do you expect from a two year child master english yeah. yeah he speaks well you know like a two year like or else you can take a 10 years child he speaks without knowing any uh, grammar yeah, okay. He see see we are talking from the point of view of standalone English classes. I am talking about that you are doing so much with English. The child is having social studies in English, maths in English, science in English. English is everywhere. So and we expect that he should do very well. The kind of English that is English that is an English subject. Why do you understand? See the difference, right? Where English is in English. Uh, subject, whereas English is in social sciences also. Is writing a good answer in social sciences. You are not appreciating his English there because that is not English. That is history subject. That is civics. But the history also calls for a language of. He is writing the same language. So often we forget that that language is often domain based. The domains are important, right? That in that domain you are expecting the child to write a good answer to his the poem that you have given. A good communication, but you have to see the cognitive level, right? That the same boy is writing a good answer of history, right? And he can write this expression to conclude. He can write in mass to sum up, right? He can write therefore. So that is a point of communication. What we are trying to see here is that we are expecting so too many things out of our learner because that part will always be a point for. A, a debate. So when you are talking about discovery-oriented procedure, uh, uh, Dr. Farah, you have to understand that how much you have interacted with the child, how much time a child has given to you, and you have taken care of that. What are his uh, background levels? What are the different diversity levels that he brings into? So you have to understand. You have to do a learner profiling. This is the, this is what we call it as strategy: learner profiling, which is important. Learners need to be profiled by the teacher that this is boy is coming from this state, this village, this language background, and he needs this kind of way. So this is where diversity needs can be taken care of. Then only your any pedagogy will work. And it takes a lot of time, energy, funding. So many things are there important, right? So it cannot be like that. Without learner profiling, I can say that child one is also same like child two, and child two is also same like child three. No. Child two could be different. So you have to know the learner. Then only the teacher, the student will know the teacher. The idea of our curriculum is that first know the teacher. Who am I? I am the teacher. I am the boss of the class. No, learner is the boss of the class. So you have to know the learner first. Then give a chance to understand who is her teacher or who is his teacher. The, I, the entire curriculum is a very in a different, shaped in a different way. That you know the principal, you know the classroom teacher, you know the course, you know the subject. But why don't you see the other way around? I will know the learner first. I will know his parental background, where he's coming from, his situation. Economics, the economics are often forgotten. 
what is his economics background he is unable to get a scholarship maybe some problem is there at the level of psychology at the level of mental level the problem is there so learner profiling is often missed and when we miss when he will when the same learner will talk about his home about his mother about his brother about his sister to with your teacher right that will be the point for interaction and this point of interaction will make him more proficient in communication skills not that you will give it a curriculum in hand exactly. and it will do well there is a difference i am tell you uh, dr for a very good question you asked i know many learners who uh, i have known that who, who he was not able to ha have his morning breakfast he used to skip his breakfast because there was no provision of breakfast in his hostel then and he used to go out right and for others so he used to skip his breakfast and because of that he was not able to be not able to concentrate in my class so one day i asked him that why are you, where were you sleeping in the class so he tells sir i skip my breakfast and i the breakfast is not served in my uh, they only serve lunch right so are you ready my point so yes I, yes yes so when i knew about this when i came to know about this i was having a, a different kind of self awareness about myself that this is the point he is communicating so when i was asking question he was very comfortable in ask, in replying back to me if there was no point of hesitation whereas when i was asking subject level question he was keeping quiet so communication happens there at one point the same boy is able to communicate another point is not able to communicate so this no. is the background so this is one of the clues as i was talking about self awareness self reflection and journaling and then if you give a learner okay right uh your daily routine activities as you have seen yourself in today we normally give an answer question like write your daily routine i get up early in the morning i go for i brush my teeth i get ready for my classes i have my breakfast i come back to school and i attend my class. this is a normal thing normal discourse but the same boy he says that i do not get my breakfast in time i don't have money in my pocket right i have to send some money to my home also he is not able to narrate those experiences because of certain hesit because he is hesitant to express all that so if that communication is being explored right only then he will be better at communicating things so you exactly have to so we should be more learner centric yes. yeah and the discourse oriented pedagogy is more learner centric rather than teacher centric so yes. like yes. as you said learner profile that yes. i'll yes. keep in mind sir yes. yeah that i'll keep in mind thank yes. you thank you for answering my question sir it was thank great you. talking to you i'm thank glad you. that i thank you got a thank chance you. to speak to you thank you i request the all participants kindly open your camera for a screenshot if you have any questions you can ask in this uh, gap we can take a uh, screenshot so kindly open your camera please i request the all participants or uh, kindly give your review on go our google's form you know and subscribe our youtube channel for the update of our uh, academic programs So I request all participants kindly open your camera, please. Yes. Kindly open your camera, please. Please kind your uh, Krishna Kumar, Hina, Samir, and uh, Doctor Abhinu Misha. Sir, I have one more question uh, for the yes. uh, kindly project. open the camera, please. Yes, I request yes. the for the organizer, please. Sir, I have a question for the organizer. All these participants who are participating are getting a certificate that they have attended a course uh, from Sir for an hour. Actually, Any digital uh, certificate is provided for them. Ah, uh, we will provide you certificate if you will pay the hundred rupees. Otherwise, this is the free, you know. Okay, course is free. Certification will cost hundred rupees. So, yes, would you sir. did you roll out the form for that, sir? Here okay, for the okay. participants. Yes, yes, yes. I request you to consider that you know if you could uh, tell them the importance of this certificate. Like, uh, sir is a much known uh personality over here. So, like you know. 
the people can get benefit out of it. Yes, yes. It yes. would add a feather in the cap, like for the resume. Okay. 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 So I think uh, there is okay. Uh, the questions uh, have finished there. So, sir, uh, we we ended it. If you have any suggestions, if you want to give the, any suggestions regarding such type of uh, the webinar, such type of the courses, uh, you can speak, sir. You are asking me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, sir. Yes. And I think they are useful. All, all Often, we often find that some very good people are around there as the participants. They always bring some very brilliant mind, minds. Right, they uh, bring a lot of insights. So it's always good to have such kind of interaction, right? And the topic was very relevant, right? The topic has, we could have continued a longer time, but since time is always short. So I can give you some other instances, other examples, which we could have done. But then if somebody is applying things in, the, in their own communicative situations, they can also come and discuss. You can also organize a webinar for the participants also, where they can present their ideas. It's a, that is also a very good session coming up that they can come for five minutes they can give their presentations and they can bring their own situations what in what situation they are doing things that is also one of the situations and that will be good that participants bring their own experiences their own suggestions in terms of some somewhere if it is a long session we can do that thank you thank you thank sir. you, sir. Thank you very sir. much sir. thank you Thank okay, you. I'll ask uh, Shahina. I'll send you a Google form, ma'am. Yeah, submit this after that. Should we leave the meet, sir? Is the meeting is over? Ah, meeting is over. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.